God never loses a battle. He has a definite battle plan. And when we follow it, we always win. Praise and worship are really a battle position. They confuse the enemy. When we take our position, we will see the enemy's defeat. That's a great truth. When we take our position, we will see the enemy's defeat. So when we're praising and we're in prayer, he's defeated. And when we're studying God's word. Okay, so number four. Read Luke 4, 18 and 19. Okay, so Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity, to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favor of God profusely abound. So 4a, the question is, according to this passage, what has God promised on concerning the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed, and others? 4b, what can John and Mary, in the text, do that will set them free from their conflicting problems? And 5, this is question number 5 now, read 1 Corinthians 10.13. For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and lay, laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance, and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience, and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and essayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure, but with the temptation he will always, prov always provide the way out, the means of escape a landing place, to a landing place, that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. And the question for number five is, what does this verse say about God and the temptations and trials we encounter while tearing down strongholds? Okay, so you can take a few moments and uh, do your questions. Push pause if you want. And then I'm going to uh, read you the answers that are in the back of the study guide. And you can compare your answers with them. Okay. Okay, so chapter, chapter one, oops, sorry, chapter one A, the question, how how to say this is uh, read Ephesians six twelve and John eight forty four, how does Satan attempt to defeat us, one A, with strategy and deceit through well laid plans and deliberate deception, one B, what did Jesus call the devil? The father of lies and all that is false. John 8, 44. 1C. In what way does Satan try to bombard our minds to defeat us? He uses a cleverly devised pattern of little nagging thoughts, suspicions, doubts, fears, wonderings, reasonings, and theories. 1D. Explain the phrase, one of the devil's strong points is patience. He is willing to invest any amount of time it takes to defeat us. 2a. Read 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. What are strongholds and how does Satan attempt to set them up in our mind? Areas in which we are held in bondage, in prison, due to a certain way of thinking. 
through careful strategy and cunning deceit. Hmm. Now to B. Uh, read the examples of the strongholds Mary and John encountered in the text and give an example of a stronghold you have struggled with in your own life. So it's whatever your answer is. And the C, how might this stronghold have come about? Again, it's whatever your answer is to that question. Okay, now 3A. Um, just a minute. Oops. Okay, sorry about that. 3A, read John 8, 31, 32 and Mark 4, 24. 3A, how can we overcome strongholds? We must get the knowledge of God's truth in us, renew our minds with his word, then use the weapons of 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 to tear down strongholds and every high and lofty thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. These weapons are the word of God, praise, and praise prayer. 3b. How are we to use the weapon of the Word of God to overcome strongholds? By abiding, continuing in it until it becomes revelation given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. 3c. Why are prayer and praise effective weapons in overcoming strongholds? Praise defeats the devil quicker than any other battle plan, but it must be genuine heart praise not just lip service or a method of being tried to see if it works. Also, praise and prayer both involve the Word. We praise God according to His Word and His goodness. Now, okay. Okay, God never loses a battle. He has a definite battle plan. And when we follow it, we always win. And worship Praise and worship are really a battle position. They confuse the enemy. When we take our position, we will see the enemy's defeat. So number four, um, read Luke 4, 18 and 19. And 4a, according to this passage, what has God promised on concerning the poor, the captives, the blind, the oppressed, and others? God has promised... Good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, deliverance for the oppressed and acceptance, salvation and free favors for all. 4b. What can John and Mary in the text do that will set them free from their conflicting problems? Continue to study God's word and act on the truth of his word. Also face the truth about themselves and their past as God reveals it to them. And number five, read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. What does this verse say about God and the temptations and trials we encounter while tearing down strongholds? God will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear, but with every temptation, he will also provide the way out, the escape. Okay, so... That was the um, Battlefield of the Mind, um, both the study guide and the book. So that was chapter one, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get a lot out of it, and I'm excited um, that everyone that takes part in this study uh, is going to just have much more freedom in their mind, and we're all going to have victory in our mind. So I'm just thankful for what God's going to do in our lives, and I pray for, um, for us to be honest with ourselves as we do the study. Day by day, little by little, it's going to get better and better as we keep winning the battle in our mind. Thanks for listening.